I'm about to strip all of the chalk paint and varnish off of this little table, bring it back to a beautiful wood finish, and I'm gonna show you how I do it. Hello furniture friends, Katie here from Salvaged by K. Scott, along with my grandmother's cute little Demi Loon pie crust edge table. I was gifted this table a few years ago when my grandparents were downsizing and at the time I didn't really know anything about refinishing antique wood, so I painted it. It was a good fix for a few years, but now this distressed turquoise look doesn't really go with the rest of my home decor aesthetic. So today I'm going to be stripping it back and giving it a beautiful natural wood look instead. Most of my audience here on YouTube is located in the US and I know that citrus strip and quick strip are some really easy to find popular paint and varnish strippers, but I don't have access to those up here in Canada. So today I'm gonna to be using this solvable paint stripper. Personally, I think what's more important than the brand of stripper you're using is that you take the time to read and follow the manufacturer's instructions. This little label on the back is going to give you all of the information that you need as far as applying it, how long it's gonna take, how to clean it up, and what kind of personal protection equipment you need. So no matter what kind of chemical stripper you end up with, just make sure you follow the instructions. I am putting my table onto a piece of cardboard to sort of contain the mess because stripper will damage your floors or anything else that it gets on. I've got my respirator to protect my lungs, some goggles to protect my eyes, some chemical resistant gloves, and then I've also got a disposable chip brush, a couple of plastic scrapers, an old toothbrush, some wooden skewers, and some steel wool. All of these tools are going to help me with getting the paint out of the small detailed areas without damaging the wood. Now I'm all geared up and ready to get started. I need to apply the stripper very liberally. You do not want to be shy with this at all or else it's gonna start to dry out too quickly and it won't have time to do its job. I find it's also easier to work in small sections, especially on really detailed surfaces so that you don't have your stripper drying out on one section while you're working on another part of the furniture. This stripper says it starts working in as little as five minutes, but I'm gonna cover it in a little bit of plastic and let it sit for probably 20 minutes. And then when I lift up my plastic, I can see if the paint is starting to lift up as well and I'll know if I'm ready to move ahead. I'm gonna use my plastic scrapers to get this goop off of the larger flat surfaces. But once I start getting into the curvy legs and all of the carved details, I wanna use my other tools to help me get the paint and the old stained finish out of there. I also have a recycled glass container to collect all of the paint goop and any steel wool or tools that I won't be cleaning out so that I can just take all of it over to my local hazardous materials collection site and dispose of it safely. This wet wood is very soft, so you wanna be really careful with whatever tools you're using to make sure that you don't accidentally gouge or damage the details. If you have some stubborn spots that aren't lifting, and chances are you will have some stubborn spots, all you need to do is reapply some more stripper, recover it, and come back to it later.
All right, there is the aftermath of two rounds of stripping on pretty much all of the surfaces. There's still a little bit of paint in some of the crevices that I think I might have to go after with a little bit of sandpaper. But right now I need to stop the stripping reaction. So I'm gonna wash everything down with some mineral spirits and some more of my steel wool. That should remove any stripper residue, any remaining globs of paint, and just clean up the blue haze that I have going on right now. A little safety note here, mineral spirits are highly flammable and they have a very low flash point, which means they're prone to spontaneous combustion, which sounds very scary, but as long as you know what you're dealing with, it's not. So I just wanna make sure that I'm keeping any of this steel wool or any rags that I have used with the mineral spirits separate from anything that will burn. We have a metal bucket in our garage that we keep to the side and take that to the hazardous material disposal site every so often. I left the table out in the garage overnight so that it could dry out and it's been doing its thing for about 18 hours now. So I am just trying to hype myself up to get started on all of the sanding that I now need to do. It's still a little blue, but now I remember why this table needed to be painted in the first place. It's got some really large dark water stains on the top, but since it's solid wood, I'm pretty hopeful that I can sand this out. If it were a thin veneer that I couldn't sand a ton, I'd probably try some oxalic acid to lighten these marks. I'm using my little detail sander with some 120 grit sandpaper to get at all of the flat surfaces that I can, and the marks on the top are disappearing really nicely. Now that I've got all of the flat spots taken care of, I need to get into all of the detailed stuff by hand. I have a foam sanding block to conform around all of the curvy spots and I'm just folding up the sandpaper in half to get into the really tiny areas. At this point, I'd say that some metal dental tools or something small to carefully pick paint out of little holes would be really helpful, but you still have to be extremely careful because one slip with a sharp metal tool can really do a lot of damage. I have sanded about as much as I care to on this little table. There's still a tiny bit of turquoise paint down in some of the really deep nooks and crannies, but I'm personally okay with that. I could spend a few more hours digging it out of every teeny tiny little crevice. I'm just not interested in doing that. So I am going to go ahead and move on to my new finish for this piece. And I'm gonna be using some of Fusion Mineral Paints Stain and Finishing Oil. This oil comes in a few different colors and is a pigment and oil top coat in one. I'm using the white oil today, which is a little bit deceiving because I am not going to have a white table at the end, but this sealer is buildable and you can apply as many coats as you want to get the color concentration and the sheen that you're after. I put a really generous coat of this oil over the whole table, but I'm gonna be buffing most of the white color off once it's done soaking in. Thank you. 
And about 20 minutes later, I came back with some lint-free rags and started wiping up this excess. I did leave the white really heavy in all of the small details to kind of highlight them and give the table that dusty sort of French country look that I have on some other pieces in my living room. This oil will take about a week to fully cure and then it will be a totally durable and hard protective finish. This table has had quite a journey, but I'm glad I took the time to work on it again and fix it up. And who knows, maybe I'll paint it again one or two more times in the future, but for now I am pretty pleased with the way it looks. Thank you so much for watching today. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel for tons more furniture flipping and refinishing inspiration tips and tricks, and I will catch you all next time.